Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Pod with Jason Highland. He is CEO at Sub70 Golf. We are going to discuss golfing today, innovation, Jason's career so far, which is quite interesting. This podcast is brought to you by podfire.com. If you want to start, scale, or be invited to a podcast like this one. Jason, welcome to the pod. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and Sub70 Golf? Well, first off, thanks for having me. Yeah, and it's it's sub seventy's been a very interesting sort of concept to start because when we started the company of thinking about in 2015, 16, we knew we wanted to go to a direct to consumer, but direct to consumer was just starting to get where you could go higher end or more boutique. And it was sort of an interesting pathway to do it of how do you make direct to consumer because our price points are lower but the quality is super high very bespoke very boutique if i know i keep saying that word and how did we thread that needle right because we knew we could offer a better quality higher service more precision at a better price from the old model so it was a very interesting way of kind of putting this newest company together it's been a passion project but it's been it's been great, like from a challenge from what we're doing and the market growth we're having. And I've been in the golf business my whole life at Diamond Tour Golf, which we still have as a golf component company. We have Hurricane Golf, which is kind of a wholesaler of the kind of call them the use air quotes, the big, big brands of stuff. And then this was a passion project that just turned into a bigger company than the other two combined. So it's been a really cool, interesting in like slightly disruptive ride of what we've done with, with sub 70 and it's, you know, I've enjoyed every minute of it. It's been great. Must've been pretty hard though. Um, physical products to ship them and to sell them. Obviously there's competition in that niche too. So yeah. how did you make sure to create a thriving business there? What systems do you have on the ops side and what systems do you have on the sell side? Well, the main thing we, we, we knew we wanted the brand to be kind of unique. So we kind of wanted to be from a marketing standpoint, kind of a little bit more, we kind of studied watch companies, right? Of how do high end watch companies market. And, and we, we kind of looked at some of the smaller ones of, of their branding and how it comes across. So customer service has to be first and foremost, like perfect Nordstrom level of, of service, but in a direct to consumer market, we wanted the products to look different. Ours have more of an industrial, milled, very sort of modern look to the product. We knew we had to get it to perform. So we, we, we created this kind of brand that was meant to be a little bit different by design because it's direct to consumer, the way the products look. But we knew we also had to have the back end there of giving the, the customers a really unique sort of one-off special experience. So that was also with the bigger companies can't be quite as nimble as what we can do. And we hand build everything here in Sycamore, Illinois. So yes, all of the orders are built just for you. Boxes get shipped out. We have a warehouse production facility here. And yeah, it's all controlled. It's all done. It's all hand built for you, you know, in the town that I live in, which is kind of cool. It's a beautiful product. I'm going to share my screen with the audience so that they can enjoy the design too. Uh, I'm on your Insta there, by the way, that bottle of whiskey looks uh, delicious. Um, yeah, it looks pretty badass. What kind of partnerships do you have uh, in your business? Obviously, you don't have Tiger Woods um, sponsoring uh, your your product, but like, how, how do you go with having athletes represent the sub-70 um, brand and uh, scale it? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, you have to still have some guys on professional tours playing the product to show that it can be played at the highest level, right? But we always thought, let the product speak. So we didn't take all of our capital and go out and sign, you know, the highest price player we could get. Like, we're very fortunate. We have Tommy Armour III on the Champions Tour. We played the PGA Tour forever. Total legend. I mean, he's been involved with the company. So he handles the Champions Tour side. Zach Fisher is on the Corn Ferry Tour side which is one level sort of below the PGA tour, but it's a pathway for the guys to get out there. And uh, Zach's been playing our product for a couple of years. Then over in Europe, we have Eric Flores playing the challenge tour. So we, we, we don't have the budget to go get, you know, Rory McIlroy and John Rahm. We knew that going into it, but we wanted to still show us played at the highest level and let the products or people reviewing them sort of also be our mouthpiece on top of 
you know, the professional athletes, it's also really important to us that people who play the club, experience the club, give feedback with social media, the way it is, if you do a really good job with that, the word will get out. So it's sort of like from a marketing standpoint, it's a lot of new school of reaching people and just old school as well of letting people help tell the story. The other athletes that we work with guys, you know, in the NBA or hockey or whatever it might be, we don't pay them. You know, we, we, we you know, if you're, if you're a professional athlete, we'll probably be happy to give you a, a set of golf clubs. And I've turned into friends with a lot of those guys. I mean, they've really helped support the brand. So that just kind of happens organically. One pro athlete tells another pro athlete they really like the clubs. And then, you know, we're always happy to help those guys. And it's been cool to build those relationships with the with the guys I've met and, you know, through the through the sub 70 brand. So, you know, the other sports, we just it just kind of happens. How did you get through COVID? Um, I believe golf courses were closed or were they? Some were open, some were closed. Uh, we shut down for, I think it was like six weeks. Uh, you know, thank goodness financially, we've been doing this long enough where we could survive it. The employees were okay. You know, and then when we got the all clear from the state of Illinois to turn it back on, it was booming. Like, you know, you couldn't do a whole lot. So you could go out and golf, you could go camping, all that stuff. So we just kind of took a six week, off sort of deal and took care of the employees and you know and wrote it out basically but once we restarted we were you know we were busy i mean it was booming really quick so golf's been on a nice run lately yeah i guess with people coming back to the sport um how are you focusing uh well what are you focusing on nowadays to make sure that the business strive this year's what are your top three goals We want to keep growing internationally. We really want to be a global brand. And these aren't, no, you know, not in a particular order, but the international side, we're definitely seeing some growth. So the goal is to make it a global brand. So that's been, I think we're in 16 countries now. I'd have to add them all up. But that's a big push that we're trying to do. Oh, I mean, the other goals is, you know, from my side, what I handle a lot of is the product innovation, right? So like my goals are to make sure we're always working on the next series of products. Even though we only release stuff every two or three years, it's constantly looking at different ways of building something better. How do we work with the engineering teams? What are we seeing at the factory level? What ideas do we have? So that's like never ending, but you're always trying to make the products just as good as you can, as good as you can make it. I mean, then the other focus is like, we have a really, we, we don't need to 180 anything right now. Like we have a really good foundation. We're going to be marketing a little bit more as the company is growing. So it's sort of like, you're always looking for opportunities because as you all know, this, stuff you might have been doing three years ago to reach people, you know, it's changing, right? AI is going to change things. You you always have to be open to newer ways of doing it, but we've created a pretty good foundation that we can kind of keep building off of. So we don't have any like major curves or turns we're coming into, but we're always looking at ways to reach customers, make the customer experience better, you know, and just keep improving on what we've sort of, what we have, I guess would be kind of like, you know, I want that customer experience one of the goals to keep getting better and better and better. Like that's one of the things I'm focused on. You guys have e-commerce. Mm -hmm. That's how we do most all of it. Okay. Cause I'm on the website here and I didn't see uh, the buy button necessarily. Um, sub 70. Okay. Interesting. Um, Facebook ads, I guess is how you get folks to the website. Uh, do you track conversions and are why? Mm -hmm. We do. But that's not the only way in which we do it. You know, we do a lot of social stuff as well. So on the website, when you're looking at it, you know, you have to go build your club because it's all customized. You have to pick your grip, pick your shaft. It's all hand built. So it's not like just, you, you know, you go to a site, click the button and it sends out. It's more boutique or, you know, bespoke, hand built. We're not going after the market that's just click and buy. Like that's not kind of what we're doing. We want that customer to know that those clubs are getting hand built. We can you know, work with so many variables to make the club perfect for them. We try to make that experience a little bit more of a special thing than just a purchase per se. I got it here. Pretty cool. Why not Shopify? I'm sorry? Why not Shopify? Um, I see it's like uh, old HTML. So why not uh, Shopify website? We just Because we just build it ourselves. I mean, we just use... Uh, Magento and we've always just built our own website so we don't use a Shopify website just the, the the I don't build the websites right I have people who help us with that but you know we've always just been with Magento 
it's very affordable um 280 for a driver like um uh, i mean a cobra or tatless would be at least two or three x that um for a comparable it's probably in reality 1.5 x more expensive is that accurate yeah, say a Cobra, say, is 550 US. We're, you know, 279 range. It's because we can be so much more efficient because direct to consumer. We're for, traditionally Cobra sells to a PJ Tour superstore, which then also marks it up by another 40%. So that's more of like a 1950s distribution model. And this is the disruption of what we did by just going direct to the consumer. Love the model. Um, the where do you build those uh china still and what do you think about the near shoring we're seeing with uh a lot of folks building building their stuff in mexico now yeah so the whole golf industry is in china you know in the 90s it went to taiwan there's really no factories making anything in the state so all the major companies use basically the same five or six factories it, I, it has not shifted yet uh, from china you know that's still the main hub for all the best foundries in the world I can't speak if, you know, there will be movement at some point in time, but right now everything over there is still done in, in, in China is the main area of where production is done. You think Mexico could be a potential candidate? I do. I think you could eventually see, you know, just, just like a lot of the owners, you know, started off in Taiwan then they went to China. I could see where they would, uh, what would be the right word, diversifying themselves into two different regions, something like that. Because you still have to have expertise in that niche of building golf clubs, right? So it's it's not like every metal factory can build golf clubs efficiently. But, I mean, would I be surprised in which take world politics and everything that's going on that that shift could happen? I mean, over the next five, 10 years, it wouldn't, you know, there's stranger things that could happen on the horizon, I'll tell you that much. How do you think AI is going to affect your business? Because in my opinion, AI is going to take a lot of time to catch up to physical businesses. But yeah, on the online side of it, a lot of jobs are going to be slash online copywriter, for example, yeah. or graphic designer. How do you feel it's going to affect your business? I mean, we've already like been playing around with the graphic. I don't do the graphic design. One of my designers and stuff, we've just been messing around with it. It's unbelievable of like what it will create and how smart it'll do it. So from that standpoint, it's going to be a game changer. I think that it's going to be a deeper dive than that. Like, you know, what does, how does AI maybe help us, you know, learn more about our customers and stuff like that beyond the task of stuff. You know, I, I don't, I don't even know if we can, I can dream big enough of the things five years from now it might be doing right of really it'll almost be like having an assistant that's smarter than you are and will have insights you never thought of i think it's going to be bigger than just this is the front end of just copywriting and making the images done in two seconds that used to take two hours and that kind of stuff i think it's going to be integrated in such a way that we can't even quite wrap our head around i fully agree with that uh what about podcasting why did you start your pod and what are you getting out of it a lot of enjoyment. Uh, I basically did it before the sub 70 brand started because I knew some tour players. It never was meant to be a full time thing. You know, it was just sort of get brand awareness out there, meet tour players, have a, just a conversation like we're having a beer. But it was basically started as just like a. it made sense to have that component along with the sub 70 brand. And I enjoy talking to people. So it wasn't kind of hard for me to be able to sort of have a conversation. You know, I always said this. A lot of guys, you know, if you have a, a, a tour player on your podcast or something, they're always very happy to talk about holding trophies and their success, right? Um, so it's fun. It's really fun to walk people through their, you know, there's highs, there's lows, mostly highs. But I just get a lot of enjoyment out of just having the conversation with somebody who's accomplished so much. Like so many of the players I've gotten to talk to, like they're the best at what they do in the entire world. And to be able to sit and have 45 minutes with them and pick their brain and hear the stories. Like it's a real, I always view it as a real privilege. I really do for the time you get to spend with somebody, anybody who is at the, you know, at the apex of what they do in life. Fully agree with that. Uh, last but not least innovation. What is on your sites? Are we talking about clubs that can adapt to your grip? Are we talking about clubs that heat themselves? If it's called, um, automatically adapt through an app what what do you have uh in terms of innovations in your pipeline 
So I can't give up too much information, but there are starting to be thinking about golf clubs with chips inside of it. Now, the question will be, what does the USGA and the governing rules bodies say about that? And what kind of line will they put down of allowing it or not allowing it, right? So we're already like, take drivers, for example, or like your Cobra driver or sub 70. We all could make drivers that go 10, 15 yards farther than you hit yours now, but we have to deal with the rules of the governing bodies of golf, the USGA, the r and So the question is always going to be, you know, how much will they let you get away with where it's deemed outside the rules? But the, it's, the tech is changing quickly. There'll be things, you know, that you never thought about that'll be in a golf club if they allow it. Yes. Thank you for showing up today, Jason. Where can people find out more information about you? Yeah, and just go to sub70.com. It's sub70.com. All of our information's out there. If anyone ever needs, you know, to get a hold of me, I'm still happy to work with customers. I'm still purposely out there. I enjoy it so much. They can always email, email me at Jason at golfsub70.com. And I am Charles Cormier, host of CEO Wisdom Podcast.com. That was just Jason Highland.